All right. We're halfway there. Natural enemies. Natural enemies are our first line of defense against many insect problems. Without natural enemies, pest problems are going to develop much faster. So natural enemies slow the rate of growth of pest populations. I, I had a chance to see this when, when I was younger in California during a, a Mediterranean fruit fly infestation. They were spraying a chemical across a large valley that was eliminating Mediterranean fruit fly and also eliminating uh, natural enemies. And it's amazing when you don't have natural enemies how fast pest populations can increase. So uh, they're, they're extremely important. We, we break them into two groups. The predators tend to be generalists. They eat anything that they can uh, successfully capture. So they're really not focusing in on any one thing. And, and a predator is actually going to eat multiple prey items. You know, a lady beetle is going to eat dozens of aphids in a day. Parasitoids, on the other hand, are very specific. Some parasitoids will only attack one species of insect. And it's always a one-to-one. -one. one parasitoid is going to kill one single individual of that pest population. So they're very specific, but a lot of times they can build up in large numbers and, and be very, very helpful. So what we're looking at is natural enemies to slow the development of populations. One of the biggest problems I see with people is they don't know how to recognize the natural enemies. And so they see some things on their plants and they say, oh, must be time to spray. And they're, and they're knocking back their natural enemy population. So I try and emphasize, you know, recognizing the, the beneficial insects. People think, you know, lady beetles are orange and black, but not always. They can be white and black, yellow and black, uh, all black. Pink and black, these are all lady beetles. They're all, they're all uh, helping out. Lacewings, people don't realize the value of lacewings. I, I would put lacewings as one of our main groups of natural enemies out there. Assassin bugs, you know, the, we have the big showy uh, wheel bug, um, but we also have other species of assassin bugs. One way to recognize these assassin bugs is that they have enlarged front legs. A lot of insect predators have big strong legs in front so they when they grab something they can overpower it and feed on it and it can't get away. So you can see those those powerful legs in front just like the praying mantis. We have a lot of very minute predators that are very effective. A lot of these are targeting the youngest stages of the pests, which is the best stage to target. It's before the pests do their damage, or they're targeting the insect eggs. Again, critically important. Not all stink bugs are bad. So this is our spined soldier bug. How you recognize it is right there. It has, a, on that, the membranous part of the front wings, it has a black tail to it. So this is one that doesn't feed on plants, only feeds on insects. This is another stink bug. This is a specialist on Colorado potato beetle and the false potato beetle. So they're, they're attacking all stages of those two species. We have flies that are beneficial. So particularly the hover flies. You get the maggot-like stages here, and they're feeding on aphids and other soft-bodied insects on plants. Parasitoids. So parasitoids are very important. When people are scouting plants, you know, they're, they're looking at their garden on a regular basis, and they see these on, on the caterpillar. Basically, that caterpillar's been killed. I tell them to ignore that caterpillar, leave it sit where it is. You know, from what you're looking at here are the, the pupae of the wasp. A lot of homeowners call it eggs of the wasp, but they're actually pupae. They've already done all their feeding and they've, they've come out of the uh, caterpillar. From each of those pupae, you're going to get a new wasp. And these are actually the wasps that are egg laying on that, that same imported cabbage worm. So those little wasps are going to kill that imported cabbage worm. Late in the season, we can see very high levels, 80% or more parasitized uh, insects. We have fly, other flies that are also doing this. If you come across insects and right behind, if this is the head, you see these eggs that are laid right behind the head. We have one group of flies called the 
pinnid flies, and that, that is their telltale calling card. They, they deposit a single egg right behind the head. They do that because the caterpillar can't turn its head to remove the egg. So they're putting it in a place where uh, the egg's going to stay and hatch, and, and the larva will tunnel, tunnel in and, and kill the, uh, the caterpillar. This is another one of our beneficial insects. This is a feather-legged fly, and that's a specialist on uh, squash bug as well as uh, green stink bug. So, releasing natural enemies, I encourage it in enclosed areas because a lot of times we're releasing adult stages that have wings, and if you just put them in your backyard, they're going to get up and they're going to fly away. But when you're putting them underneath row covers, you're putting them in high tunnels, you're putting them in greenhouses, they're going to stay put, and you're actually going to get a return on your investment there. And there's a number of, of uh, beneficial insects that I recommend. Lady beetles, because they're the cheapest. Uh, lace wings, you can, get, you can purchase eggs or larvae. Uh, you can purchase the wasps that are going to attack the, uh, the white flies. Uh, there's one species that attacks the silver leaf. There's a different species that attacks the greenhouse white fly. So uh, this just gives you an idea of some of the things that, that you can purchase and, and this is what they're going to look like when they show up. So you're going to have uh, containers full of, full of some of these uh, insects. Also landscaping to help maximize uh, the naturally occurring biological control you have in the area. So uh, really where we see the greatest number of natural enemies is what we call the ecotones, where you have one habitat right next to another habitat. That where they have multiple habitats that come edge to edge, that's where you see the greatest diversity of insects, oftentimes the greatest number of uh, natural enemies. And so we, what, what we want to have are a lot of these edges in our garden, a very diverse garden, is going to have a lot of these edges and going to have higher numbers of, of natural enemies. Planting nectar and pollen plants for, for the garden. It's not the big showy flowers, it's going to be those little tiny flowers. Those are the ones that are used by the, the, the uh, what we call the, the micro hymenoptera, the small wasps that get in there. So, you know, buckwheat and, and things like that can be very, very helpful. And it also is helping the, uh, the pollinators, and I know that's a huge issue these days, is trying to uh, enhance forage crops for pollinators. We have diseases that are going to be attacking insects, and people be, need to be able to recognize these. And so these are all fungal diseases of insects. And so uh, this, this, it doesn't look like it, but that's one of our banded woolly worms there. Those are aphids. The, 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 the healthy aphids are the small red ones. These that are all puffy have been attacked by a fungus. Um, this is actually, doesn't look like it, but it's a paper wasp. Uh, I think it looks like something out of a, uh, a horror film almost. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and that's uh, uh, fall army of the worm there. And it's just covered with uh, fungal spores. They've, they've been killed by various fungi. Again, when they see things like that, they, they can generally begin to ignore that pest problem because natural control factors are beginning to move, move in and help control some of those insect populations. We also have viruses that attack insects. You know, one reason why we get these... Uh, 10 to 12 year cycles in eastern tent caterpillars because we have a virus that, that moves in and wipes out the population when they get very, very heavy in numbers. And uh, it's really bizarre what happens with these insects that are killed by viruses because the virus, when an insect is getting close to dying, the virus causes the insect to crawl to the top of the plant and it just hangs there from the top of the plant and then it dissolves and it leaks virus all over the rest of the plant. And so it's actually protecting the rest of the plant with those, those uh, virons that it's releasing.